good evening and welcome back. And good news um, in becoming independent, I suppose, from BBC News seven minutes ago. Clean electricity will dominate power supply by Roger Harrobin, BBC environmental analyst. And it's important, I think, that we develop this independence as not relying on countries, especially which we have bad relations with, if it's uh, the pipeline through Russia and, and the gas or the oil from the Middle East, that kind of thing isn't good to be reliant on your enemies, as it were. Obviously, you don't want to cut them off completely, at which point you can be really mean to them and the only response they have is nuclear annihilation of Russia's dead hands that exists. But nonetheless, it's good to be uh, self-reliant and not relying on people that you can't trust. It's like, never work for somebody who doesn't want to pay. But before we get started, do subscribe to the channel if you want to see it grow. Like, comment, share it around, show the YouTube algorithm that it's something worth watching. And every one of you is doing a great deal of help, so thank you very much. So, the past decade has seen a huge surge in wind and solar capacity. Well, <laughs> solar capacity, not sure about that, <laughs> knowing England, or uh, to the, the UK, especially the north. And wind, yeah, fair enough, it's, it's, it's very windy up here. <clears throat> For the first time since the Industrial Revolution... Britain is said to obtain more power from zero carbon sources than fossil fuels. And it's interesting they mention the Industrial Revolution, because what about in developing countries? Is it acceptable then to say to them, hey, you, you shouldn't be burning coal and gas, and you shouldn't be polluting the environment like we did 100 years ago. You shouldn't be developing like that. Is that fair enough if, if we give them the technology and <laughs> nuclear energy mm -hmm. in order to make their own carbon free? Or... Is it, is it is it okay to say, well, yeah, do whatever because you've got to catch up at some point and we'll leave you alone to do it? Is it unfair to say, well, hey, we already fucked up the environment, so you can't do it as well? Although, th then again, it's a whole climate change debate. And if you question the effects of climate change or man-made climate change, in particular anthropomorphic, then you're labelled a climate change denier. Even though you're saying, hey, 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 maybe it isn't all because of humans, like maybe 1%, <laughs> seeing as that that's how some models predicted, even from uh, Al Gore's type, who, who said that the glaciers would have melted by now, we'd be underwater, and we're clearly not, so maybe the inconvenient truth isn't so true. And it's also odd then that the answers to climate change is to have bigger government and dictating every single aspect of your life, and yet people who go along with it, like Red Cortez, you know, um, Ocasio Cortez, say, oh yeah, well, I gotta fly because I couldn't take the train because otherwise that's that's bad for my people. And the same with Leonardo DiCaprio, who has a private jet. It's like, does he have it? Because uh, he's because <laughs> he's good for the environment? Well, obviously not. But the, the point is that he's able to make speeches saying, oh, things are bad for the environment. And because of the money he makes from that, he's able to get a private jet. One rule for thee, another for me. And I hate that. So here we have some lovely graphs, easy to understand. Uh, percent of Britain's electricity generation, January to May 2019. We have zero carbon, which they include nuclear. And I'm interested to know your thoughts on nuclear, considering we have no nuclear waste in permanent storage. It's all temporary, which is mainly just inloaded water surrounded by concrete with a sign saying don't enter. Even though there's, <sighs> again, no set way to say how do you show people in like thousands of years from now, that they shouldn't enter. And then we have biomass, lovely. Imports 3% and 6% of uh, carbon, zero carbon respectively. And I, I'm all for, for getting that to zero, personally. The transformation reflects the precipitous decline of coal energy and a boom from wind and solar. Uh, National Grid projects that in the past decade, coal generation will have plunged from 30% to 3%. Meanwhile, wind power will shot up from 1% to 19%. Not a good idea to be relying on renewables in terms of winds and solar, considering it isn't always windy and the sun doesn't always shine, especially in England. It's very unpredictable here. And Germany is an example of that, where they had to pay to sell their excess energy because they had too much, and then they had to buy more when the wind wasn't blowing and the sun wasn't shining. It's far too unreliable to use that always. Maybe as a personal thing, it's good to have a little buffer and save you some costs. Put a little wind turbine on your house, put some solar panels on, especially if you live in the south. You can afford it. But it's uh, fair enough for the individual, but I don't think on a national level it's so effective considering how ineffective it is. 
and until we can get batteries working, it isn't going to work. And we need about what is it? Uh, if we, if we can rival petrol with our batteries, then we'll be fine. But until then, it ain't going to happen. Kilowatt per kilo. That's power, isn't it? Yeah, volts times amps. Yeah. Mini milestones have been passed along the way. In May, for instance, Britain clocked up its first cold free fortnight and generated record levels of solar power for two consecutive days. Wow. Two days of sunshine. That was when summer was. I hope you guys didn't miss it in May. Yeah. Okay, they say, why does it matter? Because of climate change. It's like, yeah, maybe. But self is more important. Same with cows. Just feed them seaweed and it cuts their um, CO2 or methane production by 90%, so they've only got 10% left. It's great. Feed them seaweed. Good job. Instead of farting cows, as the Green New Deal said. Uh, can cars help with electricity supplies? Well, the, the problem with that is, again, that our national grid is not nearly proficient enough in order to deal with that increase in electricity. And that is the next problem that we have to deal with. We have to upgrade our grid tremendously in order to allow people to have vehicles that are based on electricity and we need to have s such better batteries which is why e, uh, Formula E is good because uh, as Bill Burr says that's the uh, sport of the Illuminati's Formula 1, Formula E uh, racing cars the amount of money that's spent on it for like a fraction of a second increase that if we can get better batteries model aircraft are a good example of this as well as it happens that at that point we can then say, yeah, this is actually worthwhile because we can still travel a fair amount and we can charge the cars up fast enough, or at least we can do a long journey and then charge it up at the end. Instead of doing half a long journey, charging it up and you have to <laughs> sleep overnight. It's basically like cycling, isn't it? You've got to sleep and recover. So the, the whole point of having these, these vehicles is because they're more efficient than we are. You, you're fucking it over if you do that. So if you can't charge them quickly or they haven't got large enough storage, there's no point. And then also, if you want to talk about the environment, what do you do with the dead batteries? Can't recycle them. They're even worse for the environment. And nobody wants to talk about that. Um, here we go. Has technology cracked the climate problem? Uh, today's landmark is a real tribute technologist. We've cracked technical problems dealing with climate change. Problems we face are political. Governments blown hot and cold on climate policies. Showing no sign of thinking about managing the politics of this. Great. So... As always, as always, they forget the fact that the batteries we have aren't good enough at all, not even close. And then if you're talking about vehicles, that they, they can't charge up fast enough anyway. So that's the main issue. They're not why aircraft haven't gone that way. Uh, they could go nuclear, but it would only be for cargo because they'd be so heavy then that you can't get close to them for very long. Then you have to automate it all or use machines. But anyway, that's it for now. At least it's partly good news. Uh, all we need now is better batteries. So if you can you know, create a battery with a kilowatt per kilo of energy density, or power density, then you win and you will be probably the first trillionaire. So you go do that and let us all enjoy the spoils because we will pay you happily. But that's it for now. Uh, thanks very much and I'll see you next time.